Okay, so you're learning logic, you want to be able to prove conclusions from premises, you want a simple bunch of rules that apply to a whole bunch of different logics, you want to be able to construct counterexamples when an argument doesn't work. What you want are proof trees. Hello, welcome to Attic Philosophy. We are in my attic, we're doing philosophy. It's a terrible pun. I'm Mark Jago, I'm a lecturer in philosophy here in the UK. In these videos, I'm gonna be taking you through various aspects of philosophy, metaphysics, language, the mind, logic, and social philosophy, environmental philosophy. If that's the kind of thing you want more of, hit subscribe. In this video, we're going to be introducing proof trees. We're going to be looking at the simplest case, proof trees for propositional logic. Okay, here's a quick outline of how a proof tree works. Suppose we've got some premises and a putative conclusion, and we want to know, do those premises really entail that conclusion? Here's what we do. We write down the premises, and then we write down underneath the negation of the conclusion. Okay, guys, this is the number one area where people mess up. They write down the conclusion rather than the negation, so don't get this bit wrong. It's the premises and the negation of the conclusion. Okay, when you've done that, you apply the tree rules one at a time, one to each sentence. I'll show you what those rules are in a bit. If you have a contradiction, that is some sentence and its negation on one of your branches, you put an X underneath that branch. That means that branch has closed. You don't do anything else with that. If all the branches close, you've got a closed tree. And a closed tree is a proof. It means the premises entail the conclusion. You're done. If, on the other hand, you have applied all the rules that you can possibly apply, but your tree just won't close, that means the premises don't entail the conclusion. And here's a really cool feature. You can use your finished open tree to explain why the premises don't entail the conclusion. You can use it to build a counter model. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Okay, suppose you've got a conjunction, A and B. What do you do? Well, the rule tells you you add A and you add B to the tree. Simple. What you can then do is you can then put a tick next to A and B to say, I'm done with that sentence. I don't need to look at it again. What about disjunction A or B? This one's a bit different, OK? Because if you know that A or B is true, you don't know which one's true. So here's what you do. You split your branch into two. You have a left branch and a right branch, and you have A on the left and B on the right. Again, you tick that disjunction off to say, I'm done with that, I'm not going back to it. If then, what's the rule? Well, if then kind of means either A's false or B's true, in classical logic at least. So what you do, you branch, you have not A on the left, and you have B on the right. If and only if, what does that mean? Well, it means either they're both true or they're both false. So you branch again, on the left, you have A, B, like they're both true. And on the right, you have not A, not B. They're both false. So there's a rule for each connective apart from negation. What do we do for negation? Well, negation isn't so simple. There isn't just one rule for negation. In fact, we're going to have a negated rule for each connective. Here's what I mean. Suppose you have a negated conjunction. Well, that's kind of like saying they're not both true, okay? So what you do there is you branch left and right, and you have not A on the left and not B on the right. It's just like you had not A or not B. It would be the same results. For not A or B, that's kind of like you've got not A and not B. So you add to your tree not A and you add not B. Again, you can tick these sentences off to say, I'm done, we're not going back there. What do you do if you have a negated implication, not if A then B? Well, an implication is false when the antecedent's true and the consequence false. So you add to your tree A, not B. And what do you do when you've got not A if and only if B? Well, here you're saying A and B have different truth values. So again, you branch 
and on one side you have A not B, and on the other you have not A and B. Two more rules for negation. If you have a double negation, not not A, that's simple, you just add A to your tree. Final rule, perhaps the most important rule, if you're looking down a branch in your tree and you have a contradiction, A, not A, A can be any old sentence here. You've got that contradiction, something has gone wrong. So you say that branch is closed. You put an X at the bottom, you're finished with that branch. What do I mean by a branch there? Okay, a branch is a path through the tree, right from the top down to the bottom. Okay, so this is a branch through the tree, so here we've got a contradiction, we close that branch. But this, this isn't a branch through the tree. So even though we've got a contradiction on this line, it doesn't allow us to close anything there. Okay, if all the branches close, you've got a proof. The premises entail the conclusion. If you've applied all the rules, some branches don't close, you've got a disproof. Okay, let's look at some examples. So we want to know if these premises entail this conclusion. So we write down the premises, then we write down the negation of the conclusion. Okay, we've got a double negation there, not not Q, so that can become Q. We add Q to the branch. Now we have to deal with this implication. The rule for that is a branching rule. So on the left we have not Q and R, and on the right we have P, not Q and R. Well, that's the rule for not and. Again, that branches. On the left, we have not Q. On the right, we have not R. OK, now checking those branches, let's look at this one. It's got Q on it. It's got not Q on it. We close it, put an X there. Next branch, we've got not R. We've got R. Again, that closes. We put an X there. Now look at this branch. We've just added P, but we've also got not P on the branch. That branch closes. It's a closed tree. It's finished. And it tells us that the premises really do entail that conclusion. Second example. This one's a bit different. We're going to look at testing whether a sentence is valid or not. OK, so you can think about this as like an argument that has no premises. It's just a conclusion. So we want to know, does that sentence have to be true? Is it valid? So what we do is we basically do exactly what we did before. We write down the premises. There aren't any, so we don't do anything. And then we write down the negation of the conclusion. OK, so if we're testing whether a sentence is valid, all we do is we write down the negation of that sentence and we do the tree like normal. This sentence, the sentence we're testing, it's a disjunction. So we've got a negated disjunction here. The rule for that tells us to add the negation of the first disjunct, the negation of the second disjunct. So each one tells us to write down the antecedent and the negation of the consequent. Once we've done that, we can see that we've got P, we've got not Q, that branch closes. It's the only branch we've got, so that tree is closed. It tells us that the sentence that we started with is valid. It's kind of confusing, isn't it? Because what this sentence says is for any two sentences, either one implies the other or the other way around. Either P implies Q or Q implies P. P and Q could be any old sentence here. That's just a weird feature of classical logic that you take two sentences, either there's an implication going one way or there's an implication going the other. It's kind of weird, but sometimes logic is. OK, third example. This time we're going to look at one where the tree won't close. The premises don't entail the conclusion. OK, so again, we write down the premises, the negation of the conclusion. We've got a double negation here, so we add P to the branch. If Q and R, then P, that's a branching rule. So we add on the left, not Q and R. On the right, P, not Q and R. Again, that's a branching rule. So on the left, we have not Q. On the right, we have not R. OK, now let's check those branches to see if any of them close. Well, on this left branch, we've got not Q, we've got P, we've got not R, we've got not Q. It's not going to close. Same with the second branch. We've got not R, not R again, not Q, P, it's not going to close. And the same on the rightmost branch, it's not going to close. In fact, all of those branches have the same information on them. They've got P, they've got not Q, and they've got not R. When you have a tree like this that is finished, we've applied all the rules we can apply, it's not going to close, we've got a finished open tree. A finished open tree tells us that the premises don't entail the conclusion, 
and it tells us why not. We can construct a counterexample. In the case of propositional logic, a counterexample is a valuation, that is, we're going to assign truth values to the primitive sentences in a way that makes the premises true, but the conclusion false. Since the premises can be true and the conclusion false, we don't have an entailment here. Here's how we work out what the valuation should look like. We take any of our open branches. In this tree, they're all basically the same. Let's look at this one. We've got P. We've got not Q. We've got not R. So we make P true. We make Q false. And we make R false. That valuation should make the premises true and the conclusion false. Let's just check that. Well, yeah, it does. The premises are true. In particular, this one's true because P is true but the conclusion's false. Okay, so that's a basic intro to how proof trees work. We've seen how to prove stuff. We've seen when an argument doesn't work, when the premises don't entail the conclusion. We've seen how to construct a counterexample. One of the really cool things about proof trees is the rules we've learned for propositional logic, we can add to them. We can add rules for quantifiers. Then we can do proof trees for first order logic. We can add rules for modalities, and then we can do proof trees for modal logic. And we can kind of change the rules a bit, and then we've got proof trees for intuitionistic logic. We're going to look at all of those things in future videos. OK, so here's a question for you guys. What would you like to see more of on this channel? Would you like to see more logic? Which kind of bits of logic would you like to see? Leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to hear. If you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, get loads more of these videos delivered to your inbox. OK, I'll see you next time.